Hi, welcome to the Mad Max channel. So, this is not going to be an unboxing because there's plenty of people who've unboxed this model. It's Don's Dodge Charger. Uh, it is the uh, 42111. Um, what, what I'm going to do is basically explain what this model should do and things to configure. So, one of the things it should do is you push it forward, the pistons in the engine move as well as the chain here. One of the other things is you have this thing which comes up from underneath and it looks like it's accelerating. The only thing is it being a Lego set and as long as you get it for the cheaper price it's worth it. However, full price it's not worth it and the simple reason is well this doesn't come with any lights or remote control. Now there's plenty of videos on YouTube explaining how to kit it up and that's what we're going to do now. So basically speaking, when you get to the build of the manual, you ignore everything to do with steering besides the very front steering rack. So basically you come to your model, it asks you to start building a whole bunch of cogs at the back here, which do the steering from the back and you can steer it from the front. You ignore everything to do with that underneath. You basically build most of the car as it is. Then you also excuse the jump lift off assembly. You just skip it. It's a basic way of describing it, skip it. So you basically build your differential, the assembly which comes there. When you come to the front, you get one of your hands on one of these several things. Just buy yourself, top tip, just buy yourself one of those cheap, 60 euro remote control for 2.4 gigahertz wireless things. It comes with a controller like that. Might, you might have to buy the model with it, but it's spare parts. It's always convenient when you buy spare parts. Plus, those models occasionally come with the buggy motor. If this is what powers it, oh yes, it has an engine. It's the buggy motor, combined it with a servo. So the steering does the steering thing, and the buggy motor drives the back end. But I've also got a series of gears which transfers it to the engine. Other little cosmetic uh, uh, changes. She has wing mirrors. She has two seats in that. Not just the one seat, and both then suddenly occupied by NOS bottles. Don't get me wrong, the NOS bottle is still there. It's there. And in fact, for authenticity, I gave it a pipe that leads to the engine. Oh yes, I have indeed. You might have just noticed the exhausts look a little bit different. That's because they are. Including the pipes. Yes, I've added the pipes to them. Um, back end may look a little different. That's because I put a hazard thing on the back end of it. It was this a technicality design thing. I'll explain that one in a second. So, doors closed as usual, the interior works. I've not connected the steering wheel to the steering because it was just going to be more fussed than anything else. So I'll skip that one. Engine bay. Differences in engine bay. We have two wires going to the lights. Yes, the headlights work on here. Then I have these chromey looking exhaust pipes coming down the sides. You know, like a car usually would have exhaust pipes coming out of them. That's the only difference there. Basically, all the difference there happens to be how to get the light to the lights. With the model design, it made it a little bit awkward. So you just stick the headlights on some clear plastic things and then you shine the light through the stud holes into the clear plastic. And it works. Um, inside, there's not much of a modification. There is meant to be an assembly that holds the top here with these bars going up here, you just separate them. In the manual it says put them together and stud it all along here. You don't need to, just do the stud assembly there, the stud assembly there, leave the middle open, that leaves you the space to stick the buggy motor in the middle here. Straight down, well it's perfectly fine like that. And you're asking yourself, well what power source and where's the remote control? So far it doesn't look like the vehicle's been compromised. Ah, glad you asked. So normally the NOS bottles are meant to be in the boot. But we have the control battery in here instead. Yes, there's meant to be two little bottles. One of these but NOS bottles there, one of the other one just over there. I've adjusted that one. 
while doing the adjustment, uh, the 4x4 plate, which happens to be holding on the back lights here, kind of becomes in the way. So what I basically did was I did a plate, well, two times three plates going down here, two times three plates going down here, and it affixes on and it's fine. So, control box here, and we can pull it out. So you can recharge it or put the battery in a different model, whatever your heart can take. Flick the power on. This is one of these generic things, basically. It comes with multiple different types of sets. It's a good little box, does the job fine, used to be rechargeable, and the boot closes with space to spare. Right, that's done. Apologize, it does help if you're not holding the motor itself. So she has no problem whatsoever. So it's into the engine. And then the steering and then the lights, yes. Now you're asking yourself, how fast is she? She's not slow. She's not slow. No, 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 she's not slow. Well. Yes, she works perfectly fine, just like that. Um, like I say, just buy yourself one of those cheap 60 odd euro models. Chances are it comes with the lights. Feed the lights to the front. Feed it to the remote control box. And yes, as crazy as it sounds, the wires reach from here to the front. Bit of a tight squeeze, besides the motor one. Uh, but it works perfectly fine. Any questions? Do feel free to ask. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, got another video coming at some point, but hey, never mind. So, on that note, I'll catch you next time. Cheerio.